Hey guys, Tammy Treyer, TreyerWilderness.com. It's been a while. This is day, what, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, and 28 of our November 30-day Gratefully Prepared Challenge. I apologize for my absence. Uh, we had a fantastic Thanksgiving. It just got a little busy before Thanksgiving, and then I just went downhill. I went under the weather with my lymphatic system clogging, which it has been doing all along through my healing process, but it just gets really hard. My face swells up and I get a lot of pain in my head, and today seems to be the worst where it's just, I've got a whole lot of head pain and I just get really nauseous. So I've been uh, on my back a good bit of today, but I wanted to do this, so I'm going to try to push through this. And right now I don't see anybody out there joining me, but when you guys do get on and you do get a chance to watch the video, um, I encourage you to share with me where you're from and what it is that you're grateful for. And I found in doing this 30-day challenge that uh, doing a video every day is difficult for me, that although I, I've, I have healed and overcome a lot, um, every day is definitely a challenge because I don't know how I'm going to feel from day to day. And eating is overrated for me because even with the foods that are safe for me, I eat and um, when my lymphatic system clogs like this, my digestive system doesn't work real well either. So it's just my whole body goes out of sorts. So and that's basically what's been happening. So like I said, I've learned through this process that a video every day is hard to keep up with. So I apologize, but it was a learning lesson for me as well as you. And uh, what I do hope to do is, since we've had a good turnout on the videos on a regular basis, um, I'm going to keep up with doing a video once a week and um, give that a try and see how we can do with that. Because there's a lot to teach you guys and a lot to share, and you guys have lots of interesting comments too. And I thought we would keep this going. Um, for those of you that are new to the challenge, the November 30-day Gratefully Prepared challenge is in an effort to have everybody focus on the positive and good things that are going on in your life even if you're going through a valley and you have to seek out the small little things that are going on in your life um, it's really important because those are the times those are the things that will help you through those hard times and when you focus daily and even throughout your day um, on the good things in your life and focus on the positive, it really in turn makes your whole outlook on life very different and it gives you a positive outlook, more energy, happier, more joyful, and in turn you learn better and live better for that matter. So that's why I've been challenging you with this. The other thing is there's a lot of things to know about preparedness and everybody has different thoughts and ideas on preparedness and, um, you know, it doesn't have to be all doom and gloom. It doesn't have to involve zombies. Preparedness is just an effort to live life focusing on tomorrow. So, and that's what we do here. Right now, this is our hunting season. I was out this morning with my husband, which was really, really nice. The fresh air just rejuvenates me. However, it really makes my head hurt worse, but it was just really good to be out. Um, we have four more days left, or three more days left in our hunting season to get uh, our deer. Um, so we're all trying the Mountain Man has gotten his, Mountain Ben got his, so the Mountain Boy and I are left to get our buck or a doe. Um, there are some really nice big buck. You can eat the antlers, so I'm usually after meat, but I'm going to try and hold out and see if I can't get myself a buck. It would look nice hanging in my she cave here, and uh, I might use it for craft. So, um, like I said earlier in all the other, hey Michelle, um, in all the other videos that we've spoken about um, hunting, um, you know, we utilize everything from the animal. We eat the heart, the liver, uh, we utilize the hide, and uh, the bones, we utilize everything we can from the animals, from the elk we uh, forage and harvest their ivory teeth and use those for jewelry, um, hoping to make the mountain man something for uh, Christmas this year. And um, 
So it's not that the animals go to waste. We utilize everything. Our smokehouse has been running on a regular basis lately. We've been smoking jerky um, and hope to be smoking some hams from my deer and the Mountain Boys deer. So I will be sharing more on that. I got some good photos and we'll maybe do a video on that as well. But there's so much to be grateful for. Like I said, eating for me is a little overrated because I often get sick from it. However, I love food. I love even more to prepare food for my family family, make new recipes. So Thanksgiving was awesome. Um, we did a very non-traditional Thanksgiving this year. We had mule deer steaks, uh, Brussels sprouts slathered in butter, baked potatoes, and we had a pumpkin pie, a pumpkin custard pie, and I made pumpkin roll. So it was a really good day and uh, really enjoyable, but not traditional. But you know what? It was it made it fun. Um, it, we can make it what we want, even though we are celebrating um, the holiday for what it is for, and we are very thankful and grateful every day, um, and continue that throughout the year. Um, it was just nice to do something a little different. Uh, just we didn't get a turkey yet, so. <laughs> But also, um, some of the things, other things that I'm thankful for, since we have some catching up to do, and for those of you that are with me today, share with me where you're from and what you are thankful for. And also, share with me some things that you might be interested in learning more on in regard to preparedness. Um, but I love making, like I said, the new recipes. So food and new recipes and going after my family's um, hearts by their stomachs is one of my goals always. Um, I'm very thankful for God's grace. You know, we none of us are perfect, and he is so gracious to us all. So the other thing that um, I'm really grateful for are my hard days because my hard days make me appreciate so much more my good days and my life. And... Um, for those of you that uh, are not aware, I almost lost my life last January, and uh, through surgery and a lot of healing, I have progressed. I was on my back, flat on my back, till almost July of last year, and periodically I go through bouts where I end up in the same position and um, have to work through different things going through my body as I'm still in the healing process. So. You know, God is good, and God is a miraculous God and a healing God, and I am just very blessed for my life and my family and, and, and like I said, God's grace. The other thing is there is nothing better to me than being out in the woods, in a hunting blind, in a tree stand, in the morning and just watching the world come alive. It is just so refreshing and such an amazing thing and I so enjoy that. Um, I really like that uh, during archery season. That things are just different but I, all year long my, my comfort spot is the woods and I go out there and write a lot um, with one of the items that I'll be showing you shortly. Um, another thing I like is books. I absolutely love learning. Um, and I feel that it's really important to have a physical library of books. So we will talk about that tomorrow. Another thing that I'm really grateful for is our dreams and our, uh, ambitions, um, through, uh, and sometimes those are divinely planted, but the mountain man and the mountain boy and I have a really big dream that we hope to come to fruition in the next year and a half, two years, which we'll be sharing more with you. But today I wanted to go over, um, we had talked um, when I was in the truck with the mountain man the last two videos. Hi Chad, good to see you. Um, the, uh, the Sorry, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> um, sorry you can't stay today, but catch up on it later and uh, wishing you a good day, Chad. Thanks for stopping in. Um, when we were in the truck, I mentioned about my day pack, and I told you that I would share the contents with you because some of you were curious. Ooh, I got dogs in my office here. As a matter of fact, I'll show you what's going on right here right now. There's, like, chaos, and there's another one over there. <laughs> they, they stalk me. They find me, and then they start rattling around and making a mess. So I don't know what's going to happen here. It's just like having kids. I have them. They're grown, so now I have dogs, and they make a mess of things sometimes. Okay, um, let's see here. I am going to try to move the camera. Sorry, you're getting my hand for a minute. Okay, there we go. All right, this, folks, is what is called an Alaska Guide Creations Pack. These are awesome. I'm going to real quick just sling this over on me. This is made to be worn as a front pack. 
which makes it great. I have both my hands free at all times when I'm out in the woods, when I'm hiking, if my truck breaks down and I've got to carry other things, I've got my essentials, but I have my hands free. And to me, that's huge. I can draw my pistol. I can carry a shotgun. Hey, behave. Go downstairs, guys. Go on. Go down and play. <laughs> like I said, welcome to my zoo. The animals are always out of their cages. Okay, so these packs are available. Um, you can go to treyerwilderness.com slash Alaska Guide Creations. They are a little pricey. But this is one pack that I feel is extremely worth it. These are made to uh, put binoculars in. And they are a great, great pack for hunting. Um, the Mountain Man uses it for trapping. As a new mom, you could put diapers and baby wipes in here, a bottle, and be on the road and trails hiking. These are really universal packs. And um, I will show you more on this in a second. But the fact that it can be worn in the front if you're hiking or out um, for a weekend, which we will be doing soon, we're going to do some snow camping. I'm really excited about that. So we will definitely take you along for that. Probably not live. I'm sure not live because we won't be anywhere near, near a signal, but we'll do a video on it. But anyway, um, if you can also put your regular pack, and I can put my bull pack frame on my back and still have my essentials. So it's really, really great pack. I'm going to take this back off and show you. This is empty right now. I took everything out so I can show you what's in it. This has the main compartment. It has a pocket here. It has two pockets on either side that are zippered and then it has a mesh pocket here in the back. And one of the important parts of this pack, folks, is it's American made. This is made in the U.S. so that's another reason we support Jared. Jared's a really great guy. Um, he's been guiding uh, hunting trips all over the world um, and that's what how this pack got created um, he was been crawling in some unusual terrain and, and different terrain and this protected his binoculars so this is a great pack it fits women of all sizes very well and uh, I'll leave it at that this also has another pouch up here that's elastic you can put a GPS in here you can put your phones in here you can put whatever you need in here uh, but that is really nice to have keeps it just keeps everything that you need most at your fingertips so okay now we've always talked about having three of everything I know I've mentioned that and um, I'm gonna share with you what I carry on my myself at all times okay I always have a water bottle. This is a clean canteen water bottle and I love their water bottles. They are stainless steel and you can put these in a fire and um, boil your water uh, to get rid of any contaminants or bacteria. I prefer the wide mouth but the Mountain Boy stole mine so I have the smaller mouth. But note I have a paracord bracelet on there. There's two reasons. One, my hands are not as strong as they used to be um, from this illness, so I need something to get a good grip on and be able to open this, sadly. Um, the strength is coming back, but it helps and it makes it easier. Plus, I always carry these anyway, either on my wrist, um, but this enables me to put this on my belt. It enables me to attach it to my pack, and it also gives me over nine feet of cord. Um, and paracord that is usable for all kinds of things. How do you keep the water from freezing in the bottle on, on in the winter? Uh, pretty much body heat. Um, these are on our bodies at all times. Um, if we if it were to freeze, you know, um, when we're out hiking in the winter time, at some point there will be a fire during the day. Um, but pretty much, I don't. I have never had any problems with it freezing. We're constantly moving. We're constantly hiking when we're out. Um, so I haven't experienced that, but you could s quickly stick this in a fire and, and melt your water and you'd be good to go. Good question though, Jill. But these I highly recommend. You can go to Clean Canteen by going to treyerwilderness.com slash clean canteen. It's with two K's. K-L-E-E, -E, excuse me, K-L-E-A-N, and then K-A-N-T-E-E-N. -E -E All the links are in the description if I'm stumbling through these. They're in the description below. Now, um, the reason I mentioned threes, I'm going to stick that over there. It's in the way. Um, on myself, I also have a buck knife, which I have on me 
all the time. Um, it's great to open packages. It's great when you're out in the woods and you need to rip that paracord bracelet apart and build a shelter using that cord. So I always have a knife. Always. I can always eat an apple when I'm in the woods. Um, so I, I always have that. Um, I also carry a lighter in my pocket. All right. And I always have my cell phone on me because I'm usually videoing, but um, it can be useful from time to time. The other thing I have on me, um, you know what, I'm going to take this off of here quick and show you what my mountain man's uh, craftsmanship. This is on me all the time, except when I'm sleeping, uh, for the most part. Um, if we're out and about and we're sleeping out, it's on me. But this... Um, is a 380, a Caltech 380, and the holster is made by the Mountain Man. So that was a gift to me. Um, he does amazing work, but I feel it is extremely important for everybody, women, children, men, elderly folks, to know how to use a firearm and not be afraid of it. And folks, guns do not kill people. People kill people. But an educated person that knows how to use a firearm is a lot safer. So it's really important that if you're going to carry something like this, that you know how to use it, you respect it, you know how to clean it, and you know how it operates. So I don't just carry this, you know, willy-nilly. This, this could take a life. But it's not going to take mine, and it's not going to take one of my family's. I refuse to be a victim. So we are out here where there are a lot of four-legged predators, wolves, coyotes. Coyotes really aren't, but, you know, if it's rabbit or something. Um, we have mountain lions and cougar. Um, a moose with young can be very dangerous. I mean, I can be very dangerous if somebody goes after my young. So anyway, you get the point. Now, um, it's important to have backup of everything that you're carrying, uh, especially your most essentials. Fire starting, absolutely. Now, you might think this is overkill, but I actually carry three additional knives in my pack, in addition to the buck knife that I have on my hip all the time. This is the Coyote by LT Wright Knives. This makes a, it's a great pairing knife. I use this when I'm doing my canning. This was used in my canning video this summer. Um, LT Wright makes some great knives. I also have his Genesis. I don't have it in my pack right now because he made me a really awesome holster for it. And I actually holster that a lot of times when we're out in the back country. So this is a great knife to carry. Uh, Multi-purpose, great for skinning and, and such and cutting up your food. This one the Mountain Man made for me. Put my initials on it and... Um, decorated the sheath. So he's really handy at making knives also, so I carry his knife with me as well. Again, different size, a little different, but great for skinning. Um, and he also made this one. It wasn't exactly for me, but I sort of confiscated it or, or sparkled my eyes and said I really liked it. This is really cool. It's okay. It's okay. Things might erupt here in a second. Uh, all right. Anyway, this is a beautiful knife. I use this a lot for getting fatwood. Uh, fatwood is the sappy wood at the bottom of um, the roots that enables you to start fires really nicely because it holds the uh, sap. And when you smell it, you can smell the extreme levels of sap in the tree, in, in the root itself. So, you know, we forage that when we're out. I forgot to mention on this one, too. He actually put a ball bearing in the bottom of this, the bearing, so it spins so that you can use this as a um, bearing block for your bow drill to start a fire. So all of these things have multi-purpose. All of these things can be used for varying things. Um, if we need to secure f food, we ha can make varying things with the equipment we have with us. Paracord is useful for so much. Okay, so I talked 
In the other video about the reusable and non-reusable space blanket. This is a, called a thermal wrap. It's a non-reusable space blanket. This fits in my back pocket. There are times I have this in my back pocket. If I'm going somewhere close and don't have my day pack on, I will put this in. You know, you fall, you twist your ankle, it's cold. At least you can stay warm, start a fire. Um, another thing I carry with me, the mountain man made this for me. For those of you that know me, I see hearts and find hearts everywhere. That's God's little sign to me that all is good. This is a flint and steel, or this is a steel striker. You can use flint with this or quartz, and it creates a spark. And um, I will show you how, we'll do videos on that. I'll get you guys out in the woods with me, or at least out in the yard. Cut it out. Dog dynamics. Okay, now, this, folks, is my fire kit. I've got Burley Bomb in here. Burley Bomb is a salve, which can be used to lubricate a fire piston, which I often carry with me. Uh, the multi-flame tools that we sell on our website are fire pistons, and um, we will do that in another video. I carry cigar old cigar tins and in that I keep char and I probably maybe I will be able to get it out let me see well I got it on the tip of my finger that's a piece of charred cotton cloth and you put that in dry tinder and strike that flint with steel or the steel with flint um, and get a spark in there that will actually light that up as would your lighter uh, as would a bow drill ash. Um, but having char, I carry char with me everywhere I go because, and oftentimes I'll even carry old cotton with me, cotton balls, cotton cloth, um, so that I can make more char when I'm out there. And I actually think I have some of that in here. Um, this one's empty. So I carry extras of these because when I'm out, if I find cattail fluff dry and different things, I will stash them in here because when you're out in weather like this you don't know what you're going to find it could be raining one minute or snowing the next therefore finding dry tinder and having dry tinder so you can light a fire is really important because um, if you haven't tried it lighting fires in different terrain and different areas and different weather is not as easy as it seems. Just because I have a lighter in my pocket doesn't mean I can get a fire going, folks. So that's why not only being prepared and having this stuff, but getting out regularly and using it. Now, um, this is a magnesium and ferrocium rod. And we'll show you this outside. I don't want to light my office on fire. But you shed this with this little um, metal piece. You actually um, scrape it like you, and it looks like you're grating it maybe uh, for those of you that have never seen this. And then this actually strikes uh, and creates a spark. And same effect as the char cloth, but this lights up even faster than the char cloth because it's magnesium. But uh, let's see if I can get it to spark. This is, oh, there we go. There we go. So you can see that. I'm not going to do any more than that because I don't want to light my office on fire. Plus with the dogs in here. This is a ferrocium rod just by itself. So as you can see, I've got lots of methods of starting fire in my kit. Because if one of these were to fail, I always have backup. So you should always have at least three. But with fire, I just I, I don't feel it's overkill. You need to get warm. You need water. You need to be dry, and you need to be in, in a shelter. So one of these days, we'll get out in the woods, maybe in my backyard here, if I can get somewhere where there's a good enough signal and do this, we'll teach you how to build a shelter from your surroundings because that's just extremely important because you could end up broken down somewhere and not have a choice or an option. Um, I also have a burly bomb, lip bomb. You can't have enough stuff like that. That lights fire as well. It's great to mix with my essential oils to create salves and... Um, you know, medicinal remedies for cuts, scrapes, bruises, whatever. So that's my fire stuff. Let's see what else I got here. Okay. Here's another fire thing. You can't go wrong. I mean, this is useful on a sunny day. It's a magnifying glass so that you can create a solar fire. Um, you never know. You never know what situation you're in. It also is reflective. So it's worthwhile having those things in your kit. And we practice using them all so that we are well-versed and know how to use these things. Um, 
Carrying a compass is really important too. I actually have that on my other pistol holster. Um, this is just really handy. It enables me to connect things to other things. I used to use this with my dogs and attach them to my uh, belt so that I'd be free handed and, and still be able to attach them and keep them close. So it's just handy. I just happen to have it. These were just extras, but they're in there. I was going to show you what I got. Got a pack of gum. You know, you always have to have good breath. And um, these are Benadryl. The Mountain Boy has some pretty wicked allergies to cottonwoods we've found um, when they are blooming lipstick. I'm a woman, and it's great for fire starting. Okay, now I also have a tin in here that goes with my multi-flame tool. Um, but it also enables me to carry extra cotton balls, and I can take them out of the, this tin, poke a hole in the top, and set this in a fire, and this will char the cloth inside here so that I'd have new fire tinder. Um, again, I will show you that process at, at another time. And I do have videos all on this stuff on our YouTube channel, but um, it might be nice if we could do it as a kind of little class thing. But if not, go to YouTube and check it out. Uh, the Mountain Man has done a lot of stuff too. Um, baby wipes. They're handy. When they dry out, you can use them as a fire starter. Um, just easy to stick in the, pa in the pack. I have two different things of essential oils. These need to be restocked, but um, they're just little bottles, but you only need a drop to be effective. Um, so you can, I carry, and these are usually, I've been giving a lot of mine away. Um, so like I said, I need to restock this, but what I will do is have them in the little uh, bands in here, and then I will add, stick them in between and really have this jam packed so that I have my essentials. Um, but the oils, uh, you can't go wrong. Um, it would give you a lot of um, benefits out there if somebody was injured. Um, sometimes just smelling the oils are beneficial depending on the situation. Um, this, the Mountain Man made for me, this is a shotgun shell that is uh, equipped with fishing. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize I didn't have it in front of the camera. Fishing hooks and, and weights and uh, line and something else that I carry in my pack all the time is extra shells for my 380 uh, or whatever else I'm carrying. Um, it's just always good practice to, to do that. Um, and we will talk more on guns. That'll be another subject one in the next two days. We'll talk a little bit more about guns. Um, this is something else that I carry. This, these are the straps. This is my hammock. Um, this thing is super lightweight and just makes it nice. If I'm going out for a hike for the day and I might be by myself with one of the dogs, I will take this and and put a little notebook in my bag or even on my phone. I can type on my phone um, or dictate, but I'll go out there and write and I'll lay in the hammock and quickly have it accessible to me, start a fire. So, um, but in all honesty and in all seriousness, these are something simple to carry in your vehicle with your day pack that you can, you know, if you do end up going for a day trip and it ends up being longer than that unintentionally, you have somewhere to sleep, um, somewhere to stay warm. You could put that uh, space blanket around you or over top of you. It's reflective, so you could have it that it's stretched out over top of the fire, reflecting the heat back onto you in this. So um, there's a lot of things you can do, but you always want to look out for your safety and your well-being. Um, like I said, you need to have water. If there isn't, you know, if you don't have any more drinking water in your uh, clean canteen, you can get it out of a creek or a stream or a spring and, and uh, put it in a fire to get the bacteria out of there. There's also tablets that you can carry to put in your water. Um, uh, so there's a lot of options, but water is essential. You have to have water. If you do not have a stainless steel bottle, I wouldn't stick it in, in a fire. You'll be drinking toxins, not to mention you want a stainless steel one that doesn't have any coatings on it of any kind for the same purpose and same reason. But uh, you can find the Eno, which is Eagle's Nest Outfitter, um, by going to treyerwilderness.com slash Eno. Highly recommended. These are great for just family getting out and um, just casual enjoyment in your backyard, too. Um, let me see here. The only other thing I have here to show you is, oh, and I do carry um, a baggie of chia seeds and, um, 
heirloom seeds, tomatoes, um, zucchini, uh, the vegetables we most like I carry in my pack and I carry heirlooms because then I can also save the seeds that if for some reason my day event went really long term, I have food that I can plant. And I know that's like really a stretch, but I want to be protected. I want to be prepared. And what I have in my pack will get me by for three days with my knowledge. Uh, but knowing how to hunt and to secure food, I could live out in the wild for a long time. So, you know, that's why we are trying to instill that everybody learns a lot of the traditional skills. Because if you have a situation like that, you know, a lot of the roads out here, as we were mentioning when we were driving the other day, they're way out there, and you get stuck out there. It could be days, weeks, months, till somebody else in a vehicle goes to the same location you are. Uh, you know, there's some places really back in that we go to hunt, and if we something would happen, we could be back there for a long time. So knowing these skills is, is priceless for us. Now, this is another piece of the Mountain Man's handiwork. Um, and this is my favorite gun. This is my 357. Um, packs a lot more of a punch than my 380. And um, honestly, I love shooting this one. Um, so that just happened to be handy. I carry one of those two. Um, we also carry either a 22 or 20 gauge if we're out hiking. Um, so it varies. But that's the contents of my pack. Now you can see it's not an excessive amount of things. But by knowing how to use the things I have, um, I'm in good shape and, and will be prepared for what I run into. Um, the other important thing is anytime we go out, the other family members know where we are and where we can uh, start looking if something were to happen. So as we mentioned in the truck the other day, that stuff is really important. Hi, Holly. Glad to see you. But guys, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I'm going to do my best to get on tomorrow, and like I said, I'm sorry that I wasn't on for so many days. I just was not feeling well, and I'm trying to get through this and fight through this as this healing uh, uh, process can be really nitty-gritty and not so nice sometimes, but like I said, I am thankful for the rough days because they make me enjoy my life so much more and that make me realize how good my good days are. So guys, be thankful. And uh, if you have questions, leave them in the comments below. I will see them and be notified when you leave comments below. And be sure to check out our YouTube channel. You can go to treyerwilderness.com slash YouTube and find all of our um, uh, structure building um, videos, our fire starting videos, and the mountain boy, the mountain man, and I do all kinds of different videos on that sort. So um, we cover men, women, children, and really encourage you to teach your children these skills and, and to prepare your children with uh, some of this equipment when they're out so that they are, you know, there's nothing more comforting than knowing that your child is out there. They are, they haven't returned, but they know how to use what they have and they know how to keep themselves going in the wild. That's a very big comfort for us out here. So I hope that helped. I hope that was um, some good information for you guys today, but you guys have a good rest of your afternoon. I will see you tomorrow at noon and um, God bless guys.